Hi everyone. So let's jump into the history of fine art photography. Now this is going to be pretty fast. Um, <laughs> I can really talk about this all day, but you know, we can't, we can't have lectures go on for days on end. So we're going to be doing a very fast intro to the history of fine art photography, but um, I definitely recommend that you come back to this lecture and um, come to the web page and kind of slow down and look at some of the images that really catch your attention. All right, let's get to it. So first off, let's talk about what is art. Obviously, this is a very debated question. It's debated all the time, especially when new art comes out that becomes shocking. And we're going to be looking at some of that other art in the next lecture. Um, but it's still a good thing to kind of think about because this is something that the movements and the artists that we're going to be looking at today struggled with in their lifetimes as well. So if we look at the definition, it's all about um, the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, and it works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. So this right here, beauty or emotional power has been um, a huge part of the debate. There's been times where it was all about beauty. There's been times where it's been all about emotional power. There's been times where people said if there's emotions then it's not art, which I completely disagree with. Um, <laughs> we'll actually talk about that person a little bit later. Uh, I think that's in the next video. But anyways, um, and art and theory, you know, art and art theory changed dramatically when photography came about. Photography forced, especially painters, to think about why they were creating paintings. If a photo can be taken of a place, a painting no longer has to look like the place. So it really shook up the art world. Um, and there's been this beautiful, wonderful, complicated uh, relationship with photography and art and those who believe it is or isn't as well. Obviously, we know that photography is art. <laughs> so um, art in general can be broken down into two things, form and content. So form is what it looks like. Content is what it's about. So you'll hear these two words um, a lot when you start reading or talking about art and such. Um, this is the primary way of how we uh, discuss art. Does the form uh, back up the content? And this is what we've been actually working on when every time we've talked about is this communicating? What about your photo? Are you using light, composition, whatever it is to communicate? We're talking about communicating the content of what you're trying to say through the form of photography and the different ways that you can speak through photography. All right, so let's take a quick look. Um, now this print, this is just a fun print. Um, for those of you who are also in my Photoshop classes or will be taking Photoshop, you Photoshop's, uh, not Photoshop, but um, being able to manipulate prints has been around since photography started. And so this is a perfect example. This is a combination print or basically it's a whole bunch of different photos put together. And this was done way before Photoshop. So the ideas about this have been along around for as long as photography has been around. All right, let's talk about Nadar real quick. He was known for his portraiture of famous people in Paris. Nowadays, we're used to seeing portraits of famous people all the time, but that wasn't really a thing. <laughs> um, you know, before photography, portraiture was for kings and queens and nobility. Um, very rarely was anyone else really, you know, had the money to pay for something like this. But photography made it so portraiture was available to the masses. And Nadar was one of the very first photographers who specifically photographed celebrities. So if you're into portraiture and stuff like that, then this might be someone that you would like to study. All right, so pictorialism um, was it, pictorialism was basically photographers trying to prove to the art world that photography was an art by creating images that looked like paintings or drawings. So they did things like scratch up negatives, um, paint on negatives. Um, they used soft focus to create more of a soft ethereal type of feel. 
um, this paint, this photograph in particular is very similar to some Manet paintings of trains at the same time in Paris. So they were very much working, um, working and feeding off of each other. And as I go through this, if some of these are catching your eye, I've tried to make sure to uh, put down some of the um, photographers here. So all of these images were taken by these photographers. So if this is catching your eye, these might be one of the photographers that you choose for your project. Okay. The photo secession. So um, <laughs> this, this, the photo secession was basically you know, all of these pictorialists that were trying to make things look like other art forms, the photographer said, no, let's embrace photography for what it is and really sh use photography and um, to, to take what is special about a photograph and use that because it's, it is its own medium. So it was a reaction against pictorialism. And so it usually tended to have very high contrast, sharp focus, deep depth of field, and they were adamant that you could not crop. You were doing all your cropping and framing in camera. And if you had to crop afterwards, then you weren't doing as good a job as you should. <laughs> so there's a lot of emphasis on different points of view and light and shadow, which you'll see right here. And so you can see like, especially this strand photo, um, this was, this was really ground shaking because it was, it has a very abstract feeling. Abstract art in general during this time was groundbreaking. Um, but being, but having a photographer use it, um, was even more shocking. So yeah, there's some really great stuff that can be done with this. And you can see where composition becomes huge. Light and shadow is such a big deal in these photos. Uh, a lot of really direct, harsh light going on here. All right, street and documentary photography. So, um, you know, we started off with really formal portraits, but street and documentary wasn't the huge thing until around this time. And it was very much about, um, you know, they were influenced by straight photography, what we just looked at, where we want to see the truth. We want to see photography as photography. We don't want to change it up to look like a painting or anything. And it was really about capturing reality as it really is. So here are some examples of this. <laughs> And, you know, images like this, this was taken in the Great Depression where the there's some other shots from here. Um, but this billboard was about, you know, oh, the American way. But in front of the billboard, there were lines of people waiting for food, you know, so it, it really showed the um, the difference between what we were being told was going on and what was really happening. images like this where it shows everyday life you know here we have a bunch of women we see the the type of um clothing of the day what you know they're all in a restaurant but they're all smoking so you know big difference from what we would see today and if you're a documentary photographer this book is kind of a must to read the americans by robert frank so definitely suggest you check that out beautiful images and um so let's go back for a second Roy de Carva he was one of the first black photographers who photographed um black people in a way that really was about them um they he made them these subjects that to show who they were you know the the worries the joys um so he's a very influential photographer for documentary and for showing other communities besides the dominant community all right so dada is some really crazy stuff um now this this has a lot to do with the collage you're gonna see um, but it really, it was an art movement that wasn't just about photography. So the, the movements we just talked about were strictly in photography. Dada was an art movement that encompassed all kinds of different art forms, um, from painting to performance art and photography became huge because performance art is something that just happens once, but how it was captured was through 
photography. So photography became very important in this movement to capture and share what was going on. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of photographers, but they used photography, especially in collage. And so we have some, you know, really crazy collage work here going on where they're bringing in different ideas. So here's like a photo montage of Hitler. You know, they're expressing um, how evil he is and such. Another photo montage. Uh, and this is an example of performance art. So this was a very early performance art, uh, a famous one that was captured through photography. Okay. Let's talk about surrealism, surrealism real quick. So again, this is another movement that included all types of art. The focus is really about the unconscious or subconscious mind. So they were really about trying to reach past what we're thinking every day and thinking about like dream states um, and what's going on beyond the surface. What is pushing us to do things that we you know, are doing in our real life? Um, some ways to think about this is like traumas. When we think about why do we react to certain situations, a lot of times it has to do with traumatic events. And so that would be, you know, being able to think about those things and express them, that would be a very surrealist type of project to do. Um, so in photography, there was some main photographers who were in the surrealism movement. Um, they used things like photograms, solarizations, and distortions. Now, I know you guys don't know exactly what that means. This is all stuff that has to do with film photography. Um, but let's go ahead and look real quick. So um, this is a photogram where you basically lay objects on paper and then shoot the shoot the light through so you guys probably wouldn't be able to do something like this unless you had a dark room at home um but i just want to give you guys an idea now there was other stuff like you know this very interesting type of makeup and a lot of um angst going on in her eyes trying to express some deeper type of thoughts even though she looks beautiful she looks sad right um here's an example of using mirrors and this is, um, I believe this one was used mirrors in, it, it was either in camera or in the dark room. Um, now, Philippe Halsman, he worked with, da with uh, Dali, who was a surrealist painter. This is some of his paintings back here to create these really weird, fantastic type of portraits of him. Uh, here's another one. This one is used by bending the image around. Um, and then we had um, other people who were pulling together different images to create something crazy and different. Now, um, you know, unless you know Photoshop, you wouldn't be able to do work by like Jerry Yulesman quite yet, but it's something to think about in the future when you do take these classes. All right. So um, again, so we just saw a bunch of images where the photos were manipulated in some way, either cut up or using mirrors or whatever. And so this, there, there is this back and forth. Next comes the modernist or the precisionist or the group F64. Um, and F64, that is, ex sounds exactly what you think it is. We talked about going up to F22. Some of the older cameras can actually go down to F. 64 which is going to be a tiny tiny little bit aperture with um, a crazy amount of depth of field and this was yeah a backlash against manipulation again they're going back to that pure straight photography where it's all about what can a photograph create what is special about photography and let's let's make images that really show us this so this is where we get people like Ansel Adams And of course, light and shadow are very important. Composition is huge. You can see in a lot of these photos, we have these sweeping lines, leading lines, pulling us back, leading lines, leading lines over and over and over again. So all of, you know, yeah, composition, all of the technical part of photography becomes really important, um, but it's still used in a way to show emotion and beauty. 
All right, so let's get into some abstract photography. Um, they use a lot of techniques like filling the frame, doing a lot of close-ups, simplifying compositions, and again, use of mirrors. So you can see we're going back and forth. And, you know, this is one of my favorite types to photography just to shoot when I'm out on my own photographing for myself, my own little personal projects. I love photographing things like texture, lines, um, odd shapes, you know, getting really close and seeing something beautiful within what's going on around us. Um, this is done by um, you know, taking a long exposure and zooming in or zooming out. So this is definitely something doable. This one is more of a light painting type of scenario. Light painting and then it was printed and then reprinted as a negative, a negative to a negative. And distortions with mirrors again. All right, new social landscape and new topographies. So this was stuff that was, you know, like street photography that focused on the darker side of life. So this was a push against, um, you know, the 1950s idea of the American dream, this perfect life that you started seeing in magazines where the woman always looks perfect and put together and has a perfectly clean house and happy children and has food ready for dinner on the table. Um, you know, there was this idea that was being pushed out to, to, uh, the American public, but it just wasn't completely true. It was an idealized life. Um, and yeah, it wasn't true. So these photographers were really pushing to, you know, show what was really going on. So a couple of ways that they did this was, um, again, street photography that focused on the darker side of life and portraits that focused on outcasts. So let's look. So first we have some Diane Arbus portraits of outcasts. And she had this fascination with twins. She photographed twins all the time. Um, trans people, um, people of different abilities and such. And then Friedlander, his, he was really about this street photography where he had kind of a humor to his work. Um, he looked for juxtapositions between um, what was expected from society and then what was really happening. So here's an example, no shooting in this area, obviously with bullet holes. Um, here's another one where there's just people walking and, you know, kind of glancing over to this guy that's passed out drunk um, probably maybe, maybe he's homeless and sleeping. And then the juxtaposition of having this, uh, vermouth, this liquor bottle also partially deflated and slumped over in a similar plate with similar way. So having this, um, composition where you have repeating elements, but at the same time, this is that darker side of life. You know, people want to say like, oh, wow, the, you know, the, where'd all these homeless people come from? It's always been a problem. Okay. There's always been issues. It's just that sometimes they've been hidden from us. Okay. And, um, so the new, <laughs> so here's landscape photography that focus on man altered, altered landscapes. So this is really about composition again. And so we're looking at, you know, whereas we used to have this grand architecture where things look beautiful. Now, um, architecture has kind of taken on a very utilitarian type of look and aesthetics, how it looks isn't as important. And we're getting, we get a lot of, you know, warehouse type of box type of buildings and such. And so this was kind of an exploration of how to photograph these. Um, and then this, of course, this has to do with how we are uh, affecting our landscapes. So this is an oil field where the oil has started burning. And, you know, it's in a way a very beautiful image. There's this really high contrast. Um, the billowing smoke is just very lovely. But when you think about the repercussions and why this is happening and, you know, I mean, when these, when these were being taken, I believe this one is around the, the 70s, um, climate change was already a thing. People knew about it. Scientists, well, not people, I would say, I should say scientists were talking about it and warning and warning. 50 years later, it's like, 
still dealing with it. It's so disappointing. So climate change is a huge topic still. Okay. So where are we today? All of these styles of movements are still being practiced. Um, so we are now in what's called postmodernism, where there's no one style that dominates. Um, and photography is used by artists who are not photographers as a tool all the time. Uh, painters, sculptors, animators. Uh, photography is just a wonderful tool that can be used for so many different purposes. So. I did include a couple of optional videos on fine art photography. So if you choose one of these photographers for your project, um, you might want to find where they will talk about them in here too. This one is quite a long one. Very interesting. This is just a kind of food for thought, teaching art or, te or teaching to think like an artist. And then this one is a a uh, video on how to critique, especially critiquing online on the internet when there's the possibility of anonymous critiquing and dealing with trolls and such. So those are some extras for you guys. Um, again, if any of these caught your attention, definitely come back to this lecture and read through it a little bit more. Spend some time looking at these images a little bit more. Um, there's just, you know, this was a really, really, really fast <laughs> introduction to it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed.